you've just uh, left New England Revolution and you've moved to Vancouver, White uh, Caps. Tell us why, how come about this move? What happened? Because this is like one of your, your seventh move around the MLS. Yes. Uh, again, thanks for having me, but uh, it's, uh, it's been a good journey for me in the MLS. Uh, moving from teams to teams, but it's a uh, it's part of an experience, and uh, that's what I've been doing since I uh, played. I think I'm going into my 12th season now, and as you mentioned, playing on you know seven teams, so it's good. I'm I'm moving to uh, Vancouver Whitecaps from uh, New England Revolution. You know, it's a move that I'm really happy about and really excited because uh, uh, in the previous season and a half playing in New England, I didn't feel like I was at my best. So you know, I want to challenge myself. Uh, want to win a championship, and I think Vancouver will be a great place for me. How is this transfer different from previous transfers, whether it's in the America or outside? Yeah, it's uh, it's every every transfer will be different. You know, I'm going to go to a different environment, and not only that, you know, I'm going to Canada. Uh, I've never played in Canada. I've played against teams in Canada, but I've never really played in Canada. And uh, now I get to live in Canada, um, playing, you know, for the for the Whitecaps, you know, against the Toronto FCs and Montreal Impact, you know, three teams. Are the two teams in Canada, Toronto just won the cup. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard, uh, but it's every every move is different. The coach believes in me, and that's why they're bringing me over. So I'm I'm really excited, and I hope that I can produce for them. A Canadian club. How much do you yourself know about how football is going on in Canada? A lot, a lot, really, because um, you know, again, I started playing in MLS um, in 2006, and uh, I was you know part of the league before the first Canadian team came into the league in you know, Toronto FC. So I've kind of seen it grow, and uh, the city I'm going to in in Vancouver, it's they love soccer, you know, and uh, or football, I should say, they love it. But um, it's uh, it, it's great because they want to win something, you know. The fan base is really strong. Their stadium is loud, um, it's packed, and uh, the training facility is wonderful. So you know, it's not just living in Canada, but the MLS and everything has grown so much that uh, everything has been. Every team that plays in the MLS, you know, reaches to a standard and wants to become, you know, better and better every year. The Whitecaps, however, compete in the Western Conference in the MLS, so not in Canada, which means you will not be playing against Didier Drogba, who is in Canada. How much were you looking forward to a clash with Didier Drogba? Oh, no, I've, I've, I've had a, a great chance to play against, you know, Didier. Um, you know, he's a great mentor, you know, so as a player like me, uh, coming from, you know, here from Sierra Leone, from Africa, I admired Didier, you know, he's probably one of the reasons why I support Chelsea and uh, one of the reasons why, you know, I play the way I play. Um, everything he's done, not just on the field, but off the field, you know, bringing peace to his country um, and all this stuff and the humanitarian work that he does. Um, I've, I've enjoyed playing against him really when he played for Montreal, you know, um, he's moved now, he's moved, he's playing on the lower league. Um, so Montreal Impact actually, you know, wanted me to replace Boba, but <laughs> I know, but I can't replace a legend, he's a legend. Uh, but I'm going to be good in Canada, you know, I'm going to continue to make a name for myself and that's what I've done inside America. So I'm going to continue to make that in Canada. A Sierra Leonean in the MLS, I mean, you're talking of, you have English, you have Puerto Ricans, you have Costa Ricans, you have so many nationalities playing the MLS, but a Sierra Leonean from West Africa, from Kenema, in the MLS, how does that feel like? It feels great, yeah, when you say Kenema, you know, that's the first thing I say, you know, I come from a a town full of um, um, one, maybe what 150,000 people and I'm in America you know with you know millions maybe a billion or more um, it's just amazing because it just shows that if you reach for your goal if you if you dream something you can achieve it you know I went to America at the age of 16 and I saw the MLS and I said you know I want to play in this league and they said uh, you have to go to school uh, high school you have to go to college they have to draft you and all this and uh, in five years you know I was able to you know make that happen and I uh, made my transition into the MLS. So every time I'm playing and I can hear they say, you know, from Sierra Leone, that makes me proud and puts a lot of pressure on me because I want to make a better way for the next person that comes from Sierra Leone to play. So it's been good uh, having a few Sierra Leoneans playing in the MLS, uh, but up to this day, I am, you know, continuing to make my mark and have to keep it the same way, you know, a level to, 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 to put the respect for, you know, Sierra Leone. So people don't just know about Sierra Leone as a civil war country. So they know us also for something else. How big is the MLS? You've played in England. How big is the MLS in terms of the passion? And it's it's you know. it's big. It's big. Um, obviously, people don't respect MLS as much. But I'll tell you a lot of credit to David Beckham because you know when he moved into the MLS, I think uh, 2005 and so he 
transition that league, you know, for people outside of, of, of uh, America to actually watch the MLS. And it's been really good. It's grown so much. When I made my move to, to England, all I can hear players saying was they want to go play in the MLS. So that was one of the reasons why I decided to come back to the MLS, because I know how much it's growing and how much everybody wants to go back there. So because of that, I came back to the MLS and it's been good. Yeah. Hi, Kama can score as many goals. Kai Kama has the quality as many strikers we've seen you. Why are the big clubs of you have not seen that? I'm 33 years old and I'm getting old. <laughs> no, uh, it's, it's it was good. You know, I played the, in, in, in MLS for numbers of years, you know, going to Norwich and going to Middlesbrough. I enjoyed my time. I, I say um, I grew late in, in football. You know, I like I said, I moved to America at 16. I didn't start playing professionally until I was 21. I didn't grow mature into the game until I was 25 and I made the move to England about you know 28 29 so it was really difficult but I've learned a lot through those times you know it's uh it's about passing on the knowledge to the next you know hopefully the next Sierra Leone and the guests to play in England and that's what we want to see so I've I've enjoyed I've had offers from you know teams outside but every player has to find a place where you're comfortable you feel like you can produce and again, when I went to England, I did well at Norwich. It didn't work so well at Middlesbrough. So I decided to come back, you know, to MLS because the league is growing. And coming back, uh, you know, scoring about 22 goals in one season, making it to the final, I felt like I'm at my prime. And that's how I feel right now with the move I'm going to Vancouver, because I feel like I can produce a lot more than I've been producing in the past season and a half. Let's talk about Sierra Leone. So what are the chances of qualifying for Cameroon 2019? Uh, it's uh, it's there's a good chance, you know, there's a good chance. But I think since I've been playing for the national team since 2008, uh, we've always had a chance. There's never been a time where we didn't have a chance where we're just in the bad group. Uh, but it's all about preparation, you know. Again, I, as I mentioned, I played on the national team since 2008, and we've never played a friendly match, you know. So it's really difficult for a team to be ready to make that next step without playing in any friendlies, you know, without doing anything like that. Um, so now we're in a good group, we're in a good position. Um, the next game is really, really far away, which I think is all the way to September now. They pushed it until after the World Cup. So we have so much time to see what we're going to do to prepare us for that next game. And that's what's going to determine how we put ourselves for qualification. They start playing the MLS not yet played in the African Nations Cup. How much are you looking forward to really be there to, if it's going to be your last for Sierra Leone? Yeah, I, I would love to play in the African Nations Cup. You know, it's, it's hard to sit outside and watch, you know, um, teammates of mine that I play with, with my, whether they play for Cameroon, for Ghana, um, playing in the, in, the, in the World Cup and, you know, African Nations Cup. Uh, but I think, yeah, I think it's time, you know, for us to, to make it. I would love to play in there, but if even I can't play in this tournament, you know, if we can make a building block that's going to push, you know, the next team that comes over after us to play in that tournament, it will be good. But again, I can't be content if I don't play in the, in the, in the African Nations Cup. So I really want to get there. How good is Sierra Leone? We're good. Sierra Leone is good. Uh, we're good as a country and we're good as a, as a people and the national team. Um, we have a good we have good players, you know. Uh, really good uh, mentality right now with the new coach of John Kister and really helping us. Um, but overall, we just need to work together as a team, not just the players or the coaches, but everybody else that's around football, you know, needs to work together because that's the only way we can qualify for anything. Where will, how would you like to end your career? Win a championship of some sort, <laughs> you know, whether it's uh, MLS or, you know, um, 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 African Cup of Nations or the World Cup. But uh, uh, not just that, I mean, I'm a humanitarian, you know, I love uh, giving back to my country. So if I, you know, finish my, my career, um, knowing that I've done some stuff, for example, you know, the school that we built in Allentown, you know, those things are my, my World Cups that, you know, I've done, you know, building the school in my country and finishing my career and knowing that I've done that will be something really great. But not only that, if I can finish and say, we've put football, you know, soccer in a good line for the next generation of players, then I'll be really content. And let's talk about that. What inspired you to set up your Heart Foundation, building schools, giving back? What's inspired you to do all that? Yeah, my Heart Shape Hand Foundation, it's uh, obviously it comes from my Heart Shape, uh, my Heart Shape celebration that I do. 
but it's it's simple. It's basically using my heart and my hands to give back to my country. You know, um, again, this is where it all started. You know, I was here for the Civil War. I left after the Civil War, and I went to America, and I had a great chance to live in a in a in a in a land full of opportunities, and I used that opportunity to get to be where I'm at today. So why not use you know the little bit that you have, the little influence and people to give back to where you come from. So that's just how I see it. And I'm just blessed to say, you know, I can continue to do that. And is that what you'll be concentrating on? I mean, I'm not pushing the retirement thing, but is that what you think you'll be doing full time after you leave football? I don't know. I don't know after I leave football. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things I want to do. Obviously, humanitarian work will never go away from me. Uh, it will never go away from me. But, you know, acting is also something that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into. And, uh, you know, my personality has been really you know, with the cameras and friendly and all that. So acting is the next thing I'm going to push in my career. But uh, it's not now. I'm still enjoying playing football. Maybe so. let's start talking about that immediately. <laughs> that means you might be in touch with Idris Elba. Idris from Elba is one of my, you know, I, uh, 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 idol when I watch because obviously having the Sierra Leone background, not just that, but um, he's been doing great in the in the in the film industry. So you know, you watch those things; it motivates you. You know, I used to watch my brothers playing soccer, and it motivates me to become a soccer player. And now watching those people and seeing what they do and they enjoy the art, um, it motivates me. So hopefully, I get to meet him one day. You, you haven't spoken to him yet. I haven't spoken to him yet. Any hopes of coaching? Coaching, yeah. I I, I definitely I have learned a lot from from playing. It will be cheating if I don't try to pass on my information to the next people. Um, even when I'm here playing with the national team and or just in Sierra Leone, um, I, I I try to pass the information on that I've learned from, you know, eight nine coaches I played for. Um, so it's never something I'm going to scratch off. Say I won't do. Um, a lot of people think I want to come coach for Leone now, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to live in Sierra Leone first. But uh, no, I can't scratch it off. You know, I do have a lot that I've learned, and I would love to pass that on to to to, to the younger players. Okay, thank you. We'll close now with some real questions no on yeah. So